Hi everyone, it's Nicole, and today I'm bringing you my January wrap-up. So I asked in my bookish resolutions if y'all wanted to see more wrap-ups from me, and the answer was yes, you do. So here I am attempting to do that. I hope I can stay with it. Uh, wrap-ups are probably, next to reviews, they're probably one of the hardest videos to do for me just because I do read a lot and I just don't know if I'm talking too much about a book or if I'm not talking enough about a book. And also like I forget a lot of stuff after I read a book. Usually character names are the first to go, which is so sad. So I'm gonna be trying to do wrap ups for you. Hopefully it'll just get easier with time because my goal is to film one wrap up a month. You know, maybe if you know it gets to be a little bit too long, maybe I'll start to do mid-month wrap-ups. Without further ado, I'm just gonna go ahead and get started. So I guess I'll start with the stats. So I have been updating a spreadsheet of all my reading. Um, it's a spreadsheet that Deja uh, created and she kind of, I don't know if she took someone else's spreadsheet and kind of adapted it and made it her own, but she sent me the link and it's actually, I love it so much. It tracks a lot of stuff for you. I can tell like she worked really hard on this. So um, I really appreciate her. It create kind of creates stats for you, which I really, really, really enjoy because that's probably one of the hardest thing. I want to include stats. The fact that this kind of does it for you makes it so much easier easier to film wrap ups. So here we go for the stats. So for January, um, I read 28 books. 22 of those books were books that I already own. I do want to make a priority to read books that I already own because my physical TBR, which means books that I own that I have not read yet, is astronomical. The number, I'll put it here, I don't want to say it out loud, but it is insane. So I do want to read books that I physically own. I had 14 books on a, my TBR for January and I read 12 of those books. And of the 28 books that I read, five of those were authors of color, which is kind of sad. I need to do better for that. And of those 28 books, three of them were rereads. Page count is 8,368 pages read this month. All right, so let's get into the genres. Of the 28 books I read, 13 of those books were romance. They could be paranormal, they could be historical, they could be contemporary, but they're just of the romance genre. I read seven fantasy, two thrillers, and three cozy mysteries. I read one sci-fi novel and two horror novels. And the format or how I read those books, nine of the books that I read were audiobooks, 12 of them were ebooks, and seven of them were physical books. For the audience range, I read 21 adult books, two middle grade books, and five YA books. Let's get into the star ratings. So I didn't have any one or two star ratings. I did have three three star ratings. I had six 3.5 ratings. 13 four star ratings. I didn't have any four and a half ratings and I had six five star ratings. So the first books I want to talk about are the books that I read for the 80s pop culture readathon. This was a readathon created by Whitney over at Books With Me and Lauren from Reading Parent. There was a number of different boards that you could have picked um, and curate your TBR around that. I picked the Elm Street board, which I will Put that right here for you. And then for each board, there was a bonus prompt. I did want to go above and beyond and do all of the bonus prompts, but unfortunately I did not. I failed in that regard, but I did get blackout on my bingo board for Elm Street. So the first prompt was for the Lost Boys read a book about vampire lore. And for that one, I read A Warm Heart in Winter by J.R. Ward. This is book number 18.5 in the Black Dagger Brotherhood series. It's about a couple. Their names are Blay and Quinn. They already had their book. This book was just them living out their HEA. Um, it was about them planning a mating ceremony. Um, something traumatic does happen, but it was just basically their novella continuing their story. I don't want to go too much into it just because, like I said, it is book number 18.5. It is very established. But if you don't know what the Black Dagger Brotherhood is about, it is about a group of vampires called the Black Dagger Brotherhood. They were chosen by the Scribe Virgin, who is their deity, to protect the vampire race against their enemies called the Lessers. Lessers are vampire hunters created by the Omega. The Omega is kind of the evil deity, the kind of counterpoint to the Scribe Virgin. And the Omega creates lessers by taking the soul from humans. So the series just revolves around this group and each of the members get, 
you know, their own story and their own happily ever afters. The next prompt on the bingo board was Beetlejuice, 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 read a book with a three word title. And for that one, I chose White Hot Kiss by Jennifer L. Armentrout. The first books I read by Jennifer L. Armentrout were From Blood and Ash. And I love, love, love those books so, so much. So I had this book and I'm like, you know, I really love her writing. So I'm going to read this one. Um, but it is kind of more geared towards YA. Our main character is still in high school, but it's still paranormal. It just revolves around gargoyle shifters, which is very, very cool. I just liked From Blood and Ash a little bit more. The writing was a little bit more complex, but all around White Hot Kiss was still an enjoyable read. I gave that one, I believe, three and a half stars. I didn't tell you how many stars I gave A Warm Heart Winner. I gave that four stars. The next prompt on the bingo board was Clue, read a murder mystery. And for that one, I read A Geek Girl's Guide to Murder by Julie Ann Lindsay. I also read this for my book club that I have live streams for on Wednesdays. We are trying to read Julie Ann Lindsay's entire backlist because she is just phenomenal. I have an entire live stream discussion about this book, so I will link it in the cards and in the description box for you, but I gave it five stars. The next prompt on the bingo board was to read a middle grade horror book. And for that one, I read Coraline by Neil Gaiman. Didn't really get the whole horror aspect of it. It was very strange. In the story, we follow Coraline and she falls into like an alternate reality of her life. I don't think I ever watched the movie either, but there was some kind of creepy vibes to it. The writing was very atmospheric as Neil Gaiman is very well known for. I gave it three and a half stars. The next prompt was to read a book about family dynamics, and for that one I read The Immortalist by Chloe Benjamin. This book was classified as a fantasy and a historical, which does take place um, in different decades of each of the siblings' life. And the premise of the book is that these four siblings go to a psychic who is well known for being able to tell people the exact date of their death. They each meet the psychic alone, and we don't really get that meeting um, we just kind of like, we get from the other perspectives of the children, like they come out, they're very kind of either spooked or very worried. And each section is about that particular child's decade or each part of their life. So the premise is very interesting. You just never got that answer to the question, like, is this woman truly psychic? Or are these children just a victim of the circumstance where if you believe in something enough, your choices and your actions kind of manifest that to become true. It was very interesting in that regard. Each of the children did die on the date that the psychic predicted. Some of the children handled it very well, some did not. Some aspects of this book are very triggering. There's use of the N-word and the F-word, the derogatory slurs. There is alcohol and drug abuse, and there is a mention of suicide as well. So just be careful as you're going into this book. I did enjoy it. I gave it three and a half stars. The next prompt was for Halloween, read a book that is holiday centered. And for that one, I read Chocolate Covered Murder by Nicole Reese. This is a series of holiday shorts that she has written. Um, very short novella. They're probably around 60, 70 pages. What I really love about this series is that they're like a cozy mystery and a contemporary romance had a baby and that this is the genre because there is a romance and the couple does have an HEA, but you do have those cozy mystery aspects where there's a murder and they're sleuthing and they're trying to figure out the whodunit kind of thing. So I really, really enjoyed it. And for this book, it is centered around Valentine's Day. So that's where the holiday aspect comes in. But I did really enjoy this book. It is quick, it is steamy, it is to the point. And honestly, sometimes you just need a little quick reads like that. Very, very good. I gave it four stars. So in this book, we have Brianna and Nate and circumstances just happen and they both end up attending a sexy and singles convention in a hotel. There is a blizzard that happens. So they are kind of like trapped in the hotel. They can't really leave. So they have that like forced proximity trope, which I really, really enjoy. But also while they're in this hotel, a murder happens. And so Brianna is like the crime buff. She She's the true crime fan. So she wants to figure out the who done it. Obviously, while Brianna and Nate are working together, sparks fly and there is just undeniable chemistry between the two of them. I'm really enjoying these little holiday shorts from Nicole Reese. The next prompt is for Poltergeist, read a book about a haunted house. And for that one, I read The Shining by Stephen King. Not really a haunted house, more like a haunted hotel, but you get the idea. 
So if you've read Stephen King, you know that his books can be long and kind of drawn out and very dry, except when it comes to the more spooky or thrilling aspects of the book. This book really did start to pick up more towards the end, you know, when Jack is very deep and in spiraling into his madness because of the hotel and actually actively trying to kill his wife and son. So there are trigger warnings in this book as well, trigger warnings for alcohol abuse and dependency. Um, Jack does think about, you know, wanting a drink, it'll just take the edge off kind of thing. Uh, child abuse, he is very violent toward his family when he is in one of those kind of rages emotional abuse towards his wife, domestic violence, and also the use of racial slurs, as is very prevalent in Stephen King's work. So please just be aware when you go in to read this book. I gave it three stars. The next prompt was for Labyrinth. Read a book about Fae lore, and for that one I read Taken by the Huntsman by Mistral Dawn. So in this book we have Katarin, who is um, part of the Wild Hunt. He's like king of the Wild Hunt, and he is hunting a rogue fae and in the real world. And while he's doing that, he sees Cassie, who is our other main character, and it's kind of like a fated mate situation where he sees her and he instantly knows that is his mate. And he kind of just takes her. Of course, he says it's for her own good because once, you know, the kind of faded mates thing starts, other Fae will be able to tell that she belongs to someone and being able to use that as leverage against him and she's just human. So really it's for her own good. It's for her protection. Of, of course, he kind of plays that up in his mind. He's like, this is obviously for her own good. I know it's best kind of thing. So trigger warnings for dubious consent throughout this book. She does take the whole learning about Fae and alternate realities and paranormal aspects. Cassie takes that very well. She kind of takes it in stride. What I did really like about this book is that sometimes you got some bits of the like different animals in the Fae world, like their points of view, which I thought was just super cute. Um, there's this one character who has like, most of the time he's in the form of a bunny and it's like she can carry him around and things like that. But he's also to like grow in size where she's able to like ride him like across great distances, especially when she was trying to warn Katarin about something that was happening. And then you get little, um, you get his little point of view where he's like, if I do this really good, maybe she'll give me a carrot kind of thing. And I was like, that is just adorable. So um, I did like it. I am interested in continuing with the rest of the series, probably not right away, but I gave it four stars. The next book I read was for the prompt Alien, read a space opera. And for that one, I read Ascension by Jacqueline Koyangi. Definitely more of a space opera than a romance, even though there is a sapphic romance in this book. A lot of things were happening in this book that I didn't really understand. Like I said, heavy on the space opera in the more sciencey aspects of the sci-fi. I just kind of went with it. <laughs> a lot of things were happening in this book so many things. And I felt like this book was not very long for that much stuff to be going on. But it just seemed like one thing after another after another was happening. And it was kind of like you couldn't catch your breath kind of thing. But it was very fast paced in that regard. So if you actually like more sci fi driven, um, not necessarily really heavy on the romance. I mean, there is some, you know, graphic scenes between the two love interests. You know, you have the angst of them before they get together. And then once they get together, and they have the one sex scene, it's kind of there on the back burner, because other things are happening. I actually did enjoy this book. It was supposed to be a series. It said Tangle Accent number one. So I go and look, but it's the only book in the series. And this book was written in 2015. So um, that's kind of a disappointment. But yeah, there's a lot of talk about like alternate realities, the metaphysical stuff. Like our main character, her name is Alana, and she is known as um, a sky surgeon, which is what they call people who work on the spaceships. She is able to touch and feel the ship and their emotions and their energies and their auras like they were a living person. It's very metaphysical. And that's how she's able to be so good at what she does. She's able to know what goes, what's wrong or what's what the issue is of a ship simply by looking and touching and interacting with the ship. So that's all very interesting. It was very, very cool. It's just not explained very well. But like I said, if you kind of just roll with it, you will enjoy the book. I gave it three and a half stars. And for our bonus prompt, we were to read a book that has LGBTQ rep in it. And for that one, I read The Gilda Stories by Joelle Gomez. So in this book, you follow a girl um, in the 1800s. She does get rescued from slavery by a woman named Gilda. She lives in the house with them. And after a while, you notice some strange things about Gilda. She talks about drinking blood. She talks about, you know, she's very powerful, very strong. And eventually she transfers the vampirism to 
this girl that she rescued and then she adopts the name Gilda. So it's her life from when she's rescued from slavery on into like futuristic 2050. So it's very interesting. It's not like that whole time period because it's not that long of a book. It's like certain points in time of things that are happening to her. The intrigue of what keeps you turning the page is that you want to know where this is going. You get little snippets of action like because these are kind of trials and tribulations that Gilda has to go through. So it's very character driven. There's no really overarching plot that's happening. Um, I did feel at times that this book did drag on for a bit. Sometimes passages would often repeat themselves. I don't know if it was because like Gilda was thinking like similar things. They were just so similar. I just kept thinking like Gilda was thinking something like in a loop. Like she kept um, thinking about it over and over again. And then so that was like how it was written. I was listening to Siri read the ebook to me because I bought the ebook. And I honestly thought like a glitch was happening. I thought maybe like Siri kept reading a certain passage like over and over again. It was that similar. But there were also times where Gilda would, would be in a party or hanging out with somebody and she would be thinking about another time and it would like jump to that scene and it would be like back and forth. So that was kind of confusing and jarring. It kind of took you out of the story because you didn't really know exactly what was going on. Overall, it was a really good book. It was very interesting, a great premise. Trigger warnings, obviously, slavery, racism, use of the n-word and the f-word. Uh, there's mentions of sexual assault and there's obviously some blood and gore happening just because there are vampires. But I gave this one three stars. I did read one more bonus prompt uh, for the pop culture readathon. It was for the bonus prompt, read a book by an author of color. And for that one, I read When No One Is Watching by Alyssa Cole. This was her first thriller and she normally writes contemporary romances. So that's what I know her from. I read A Princess in Theory. I literally just read A Duke by Default. So it took me a second to get out of that mindset that I was not reading a romance. <laughs> like our two main characters, Sydney and Theo, like I was just expecting their romance to grow and they eventually be together and end in an HGA. And I was like, stop expecting that. <laughs> stop it. So in this book, we have Sydney and Theo. Sydney is noticing some strange things that are happening in her neighborhood. People are disappearing. Um, their houses are going up for sale. And she's like, I know these people, they would not just up and move without telling the community where they're going. So she does finally find out something more sinister is going on. And she kind of puts it on herself to figure out what's going on because obviously she's getting no help from the police. So I felt like this book was a very slow start. You're kind of, you know, introducing the characters, the, you know, the neighborhood, everything that's going on. You do get a little bit of kind of snippets like, okay, that's weird. But then you would just go back to normal everyday life. Um, nothing really thrilling and spooky happened probably until about the 70% mark. So it is kind of a slow build to that. So just be aware of that as if you go into this book to read it. Trigger warnings for death, murder, racism, uh, medical content. Also, uh, Sydney does have panic attacks and disorders and things like that. So just be aware of those when you're going into this book. I gave it four stars. So the two books that I had on this TBR, um, they were for bonus prompts that I didn't get to. One was for a disability rep and I was supposed to read Grounded in January by Savannah Hendricks and I did not. And another bonus prompt was to read a book by an indigenous author. And for that one, I had Sex in the Single Vamp by Robin Covington, which I still wanna read, but I just didn't get to it in January. So that was the wrap up for the pop culture readathon. I'm gonna go through the other books that I read in January. I'm gonna go through them pretty quickly. I'll only talk about them if something really stands out. Cause like I said, I don't want this to be overly long. So the first book that I read that wasn't a part of the readathon was Their Fractured Light by Amy Kaufman and Megan Spooner. This is book number three in the Starbound series. I love this series so, so much. This is my second time rereading it. And like I said, it's third in the series. So I don't wanna get into it too much, but the series is amazing. I love it. I gave it four stars. Next book I read was The Midwinter Mail Order Bride by Katie Wilde. This is a fantasy romance about a barbarian who won the crown of a country by winning this epic battle. And it's about a marriage of convenience between him and Anya, which is a princess of another country. Everyone is obviously scared of him because he has this reputation for being like a barbarian warlord. But really, he just kind of wants to do what's best for the people. It was good. I do want to continue on the series. I gave it four stars. The next book I read was Pretty Girls by Karen Slaughter. This is a thriller. This book was my first five-star read of the year. It was very good, very thrilling. This book kept you on the edge of your seat. 
I talk about this book more in my monthly favorites, which is a ongoing collaboration that I do with a number of different romance booktubers. So definitely keep an eye out for that. The next book I read was Double Down by Susan Hayes. This is a sci-fi romance and it is a male, male, female romance. This book does a really good job at explaining like the history and the science behind the cyborgs that are in this book. And I really, really enjoyed that aspect. We have our alpha heroes, which I love that trope. I love me some alpha heroes. Also, we have our sassy heroine. She kicks ass, takes names. She's fantastic. And we also have the faded mage trope as well. Really enjoy this book. I gave it four stars. Uh, the next three books I read are a part of the Beauty series, which are written by different authors and it's their take on a Beauty and the Beast retelling. The first one I read was Beauty and Autumn, which is actually the third book in the series. It's by Ruby Dixon. I didn't know it was a series, but I do enjoy Ruby Dixon's writing. It's more fantasy aspect and not sci-fi like she normally writes. The first one is Beauty in Spring by Katie Wilde, and the third one is Beauty in Summer by Ella Good. Beauty in Autumn by Ruby Dixon I gave four stars, and the other two books I gave three stars. So I did talk about A Geek Girl's Guide to Murder, which is book number one in the Geek Girl Mystery series by Julianne Lindsay. I did read the other two books in that series, A Geek Girl's Guide to Arsenic and A Geek Girl's Guide to Justice. Um, I did extensive discussions of those books on my channel. So I will link those in the cards in the description box for you. So good. It's a Julianne Lindsay. Of course, I gave them five stars. The next book I read was The Lightning Thief by Rick Riordan. And I read that with Brie over at The Locked Booktician. We are doing a Percy Jackson read along and we are doing live stream discussions of those books as well. So I will link those in the description box for you. I gave this book four stars. The next book I read was Stranger in My Arms by Lisa Kleipas. This is the first Lisa Kleipas book I ever read and it is a favorite of mine. I've probably reread it three or four times. It is so, so good. I buddy read this with B over at Biba Bookish. I love this book so much. It's a historical romance. We have our main character, Laura. The book starts off and her husband is has been missing, presumed dead for the last year because he went on this adventure to India. And then she gets news that her husband is in fact alive and is making his way back to London to get back to her. Everyone is so happy for her, like, oh, you're getting your husband back. This is fantastic news. And she's like, no, her husband was very emotionally abusive and cold and distant and really only used her to breed heirs. And when she didn't ever get pregnant, he kind of blamed her for that. So she's like, I've been used to living single and making my own decisions and running my own life for far too long for him to come in and kind of swoop in and take charge. So she doesn't want it. <laughs> she also believes wholeheartedly that her husband is in fact dead. So she's like, this poor man, he probably is just, you know, something's wrong with him. We need to help him out the best we can. Um, but he comes to the house and he knows things that only her husband would know, but he has changed not only physically, but also his personality, his demeanor as well. Physically, he's lost weight and being nursed back to health because um, he says his ship went down, he hit his head, he had amnesia, he didn't know who he was for the longest time, but he did recover his memories. And when he did, that is when he made his way home. But then also his personality, the way he treats Laura, um, that's also very different. He's very loving, he's very attentive. He wants to make their marriage work very attentive to her sexually because, you know, he used to, you know, just kind of wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, and on his way. Now he actually is attentive to her wants, her needs, her desires, and she's actually enjoying sex for the first time. And what a concept. One thing I really love about this book is obviously you get the mystery. Is he or isn't he? You do find out one way or the other. But also what I really love is Hunter loves Lara with a fierceness that is so romantic, is so swoony. I just, I love it so, so much. Some of my favorite passages and quotes in romance is in this book. And it just, it makes me swoon every time I read it. Of course, I gave it five stars. The next book I read was A Sky Beyond the Storm by Saba Tahir. This is book number four in An Ember in the Ashes series. I read this book for a read-along that was hosted by Deja over at Deja's Book World. We did an extensive discussion of this book, so I will link that in the description box for you. It wrecked me emotionally. It did go in the freezer. I was very sad for a while, but it was an amazing series, and this is an amazing end to that series. I give it five stars. The next two books I read are books one and two of the Kilts and Kisses series by Madison Fay. The first book was called Tamed by the Highlander, and the second book is called Stolen by a Scottish Rogue. I love Madison Fay so much. She writes very steamy, very over the top, 
very dramatic novellas. So in this book we have an arranged marriage between our two main characters, but it turns out um, they are very compatible. <laughs> And it's like kind of like an insta-lust situation or insta-love. I love her little um, disclaimer at the bottom of the synopsis. It just says, all the trope cliches, lots of plaid, wildly historically inaccurate, more alpha than you can shake a thistle at, warning, not responsible for lost or ripped bodices, reader beware. <laughs> Honestly, if that doesn't make you read this book, I don't know what can. But I have gotten so many people to read Madison Faye, uh, Deja over at Deja's Book World, Charles over at Books on Stereo, India at Life is a Page Turner, Izzy at Happy For Now, and also my good friend Jen Jen who we do the live streams with on Wednesday. I've gotten them all to read Madison Faye and they love her. So I'm five for five recommending Madison Faye. So please give her a try. She's fantastic. She is not available on Amazon though, unfortunately. She was banned from Amazon. So you can buy her books on Eden Books, which you can buy a Kindle format or another format um, if you have another digital e-reader. But um, she's fantastic. Love her so, so much. Next book I read was Claimed by the Hunter by Lene Lee. And this was a recommendation from Kayla over at On the Fritz. She was reading this book and she was talking about how it's a sci-fi romance uh, where these alien beings, they are humanoid looking. They do look like a human, but they're just kind of bigger. I think he's blue or purple or muscular, obviously. And they have very weirdly shaped appendages, you know. You know what I'm talking about. Kind of like, you know, um, if you've read Ice Planet Barbarians, uh, Ruby Dixon, they have, the males have this little spur. You know, I really kind of want there to be a Goodreads list of sci-fi romances where they have weirdly shaped dongs. <laughs> but that's just me. So I did really enjoy this book. It is a sci-fi romance, but it's like on dystopian earth. There was a apocalypse that happened, which the people on earth call it the bug apocalypse. Basically, it's like these huge insects that eat people. They're just very deadly and any kind of noise, they rush toward it and it's like a feeding frenzy. So they are, you know, sequestered and bunkered and hunkered down. And we have the hunters who is an alien race who their one job is to eradicate these bugs. And that's what they've been doing. They have been, you know, trying to kill these bugs, but they're obviously very dangerous and they reproduce like crazy. So, but a lot of people, they think that these hunters the, the alien race are responsible for the bug apocalypse so they don't trust them and Alice is one of those people. Alice is our main character. She is living with her sister. So Natalie was injured so Alice is responsible for the foraging to get food to find what she can. So when she's out foraging she meets Kajek. I think that's how you say his name. It's K-A-J apostrophe K. So he is a hunter. He's big. He's huge. She's frightened, obviously. There's a faded mate situation where he recognizes her as his mate and he tries to give her food, flowers. He's trying to woo her and she's just not having it. <laughs> she's like, uh, no. But there's something that happens. Alice gets in danger and he rescues her. And so things just go from there. It was a really good book. I enjoyed it. I love sci-fi romances. I gave it four stars. The next book I read was Three Dark Crowns by Kendar Blake. I buddy read this with Summer over at Seasons Readings. Um, we did really enjoy it. It is kind of slow, but it has those political intrigues and the like kind of backstabbing moments and everybody has their own agenda kind of thing. So that really kept me reading basically about these three queens who are eventually going to grow up and fight one another for a chance to be the one true queen. And each one of them has uh, their own special abilities. We have the poisoner queen who is able to ingest poisons without getting sick. She's also able to poison other people very well. And then we have a naturalist queen who um, can speak to animals, can cultivate life, uh, vegetation, things like that. And then we also have like an elemental queen who can manipulate fire. So that's also that's all very interesting. I love like that kind of paranormal aspect where they have magic and things like that. The ending is really what gets you that make that hooks you to read the next book. Um, but like I said, a slow start, but I did enjoy it. I gave it three and a half stars. 
And the last book that I will be discussing is All the Stars and Teeth by Adeline Grace. I buddy read this with a friend that I've known since high school and I didn't really know a whole lot about this book before going in. Um, uh, when I bought it, it was a complete cover buy. The cover is stunning. It's gorgeous. So we have magic, we have pirates, we have mermaids, we have political intrigue. So we have this uh, princess of an island kingdom and there are surrounding, there's other islands as well. She rules over, you know, her family rules over all the other islands and each island can do one type of magic. So there are rumors from an other island that they're doing multiple types of magic. And from her, for her knowledge, her parents have always told her that doing more than one type of magic is very dangerous. A really great way to lose your soul and to wither away and die kind of thing. She doesn't know everything that's going on. She's just the princess. Her dad is still reigning as king. So he knows more than he's letting on. But she does have to do this demonstration of her powers where people, she has basically has to show people that she's ready to take on the responsibility and be ruler. But obviously her demonstration does not go as planned. Um, people are actually kind of scared of her. Um, she sinks down very deep into her magic and it kind of takes control of her. So her father kind of puts her in the dungeon to kind of figure out what to do with her because in her demonstration, um, someone is killed very horrendously and she was supposed to kill him. He was a prisoner, but she kind of does it very barbarically and um, she was supposed to do it in the most humane way as possible. So people are thinking that she does not have control of her abilities. So she's a danger. So they put her in the dungeon. A man by the name of Bastion breaks her out. He is a pirate. He's saying like, they're debating what they're going to do with you. Um, I can rescue you, but you have to do something for me in return. Someone stole my magic. I need help getting it back. And something sinister is happening on my island. Come with me. So she does. And it's basically their adventure across the seas to find out what was really, really going on. So I did enjoy this book. Very slow paced in certain aspects. Honestly, I expect them to get to where they're going much quicker and to kind of fight the bad guy quicker than they did. The whole book is basically them getting to his island and the last probably 80% of the book is them defeating and you know things actual things start happening so that kind of threw me off a little bit. Trigger warnings in this book for blood and gore, self-harm, suicide. There is talk about sexual assault and there's also talk about a very toxic relationship. I am intrigued to read the rest of the series, but not right away. I gave it three stars. All the trigger warnings that I listed for all of these books are on my reviews on Goodreads. So you can look more into more detail if you do eventually want to read those books. So those are all the books that I read in the month of January. Tell me how I did with this wrap up. Did you want me to do it differently? Did you like the way I did it? Um, do you want me to format it differently? What should I do <laughs> in these wrap ups? I'm, I need your opinion desperately. Do I talk more about the books? Do I talk less about the books? Just let me know. What do you think? Please, please go ahead and like my video if you did. Comment below and subscribe to my channel. You can follow me on all the social media platforms. The links will be in the description box below. We'll see you next time, Avid Readers.